So which milk is actually best for you? Almond, oat, cow or soya? All of them are very popular at the moment, but they all have their own positives and negatives. For example, and please do excuse the chaos which is my studio at the moment, I did a scientific deep dive video on almond milk and that one got a little bit messy. However, sit down, let's have a chat. The ecological perspective says cow's milk takes four squared kilometers to produce but only one liter of cow's milk. And nut farms spend six years watering trees for only then to start producing nuts. Others say soya beans and oat beans takes hectares upon hectares to grow, destroying forests in order to have enough space. So which one do you then choose? Should we just stop drinking milk altogether then? The short answer is no, but a scientific deep dive is needed. So let's dig into our beautifully complex bodies and explore which milk is healthiest for you. First, let's compare the nutrient values of all of these. Almond, oat, cow, and soya. Almond has one gram of protein, eight grams of carbs, two grams of fat. Oat has one gram of protein, 5.8 grams of carbs, and 13 grams of fat. Soya has 8.2 grams of protein, three grams of carbs, and 7.5 grams of fats. Cow's milk has eight grams of protein, 12 grams of carbs, and two to eight grams of fat, depending on whether you're taking low fat or full cream milk. From all of the above, it seems like cow's milk seem to have the most nutrients. However, most doesn't always mean best. Plant-based milks almost always have less sugars in them and less fats. Well, less bad fats. Plant-based fats are what we call good fats. They actually clean out clogged arteries. Cow's milk, however, have lots of vitamin D and calcium, which plant-based fats doesn't naturally have lots of. So both seem good and bad at the same time. Now, if you've seen my video where I do a scientific deep dive on almond milk, you know why my studio is in the state that it is in, you'll probably know of a chemical compound called phytic acid. This compound that almond milk is full of actually decreases bioavailability of vitamins and minerals in the gut. In essence, preventing the body from absorbing vitamins and minerals. So I'm not sure whether almond milk is the greatest idea, but we'll get back to that. Moving on to oat milk. It seems from the selection we have here on display today that it might be the lowest on the log, even below almond milk. Oat milk has a lot of carbs in it. In many cases, just as much as cow's milk. It, however, has very little protein in it. So it sounds like a bad idea all in all. However, that's not the case. It has a lot of fiber in it. So if you struggle with constipation, oat milk might be a good option. Take note, however, you're getting the least amount of protein for your milk here. So all that's left is cow's milk and soy milk. And these two actually compete hand on hand, especially if you're looking only at their nutrient value. Both have similar amounts of proteins and fats. However, just on the basis of macronutrients, I would almost say that soy milk takes the golden medal because it's lower in carbs slightly and it's a plant-based fat, so it's technically healthier. Soya milk also has a lot of potassium in it, which is great news for athletes and people who exercise often. Potassium is a super important electrolyte which helps prevent muscle cramps and a bunch of other things. But hold up, there's one thing about soya milk that does however need to be discussed, and it's called isoflavone. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It's a compound found in soya milk that actually mimics estrogen in the body. Now this is both good and bad. If you're a normal, healthy, young female or male, adding some extra estrogen into the mix might just throw everything all out of balance, which is not good, obviously. However, if you're an older lady, premenopausal perhaps, or menopausal, or you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, then some extra estrogen-like compounds in the body might even do you some good. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to read up on isoflavone. It's very interesting estrogen-like compound that can mimic and, and wreak havoc. Anyways, moving on. At the moment, milk in general, whether it's plant-based or cow's milk, all seem a bit iffy. And I know you came to this video looking for answers on which milk is the best. In short, the best is cow's milk, but low-fat cow's milk. And it's also not for everyone, so let me explain. Firstly, cow's milk is high in what we call bad fats, as I said earlier. These are your saturated fats. We've known for decades that saturated fats cling onto the insides of your arteries, which eventually leads to plaque buildup and then, well, heart attacks and strokes. So if you have family history of high cholesterol, heart attacks, strokes, then opting for cow's milk isn't the best idea. You can, however, get around this by simply getting low-fat cow's milk. It's not going to solve the problem completely. However, it does bring all of the other benefits from normal milk, which is good, like calcium, vitamin D, and lots of protein, which is nice. But there's one more thing wrong with cow's milk that we need to address, and it's this matter. 
This map shows where in the world most people have an enzyme called lactase and where in the world people don't have that enzyme called lactase. This is however before globalization and travel happens, so make sure that you take into account where you originally came from. For example, my white ass definitely did not come from Africa. However, I do love it here and I digress. This map in essence says who in the world can digest lactose and who can't. It's believed that almost 68% of the world has lactose malabsorption. Yeah, two thirds of the world actually cannot properly absorb and digest lactose found in milk. Shocking, right? Anyways, to conclude this video, so ranking milks from best to worst, I'd say low fat cow's milk is on top for those of you who aren't lactose intolerant. Below that, I'm putting soy milk, but only for those of you who are older females. Then we have almond milk, which if phytic acid isn't such a big deal as scientists at the moment are trying to make it be, then this might actually be our best option, especially for lactose intolerant people. Add some protein powder to the mix and you basically have something better than cow's milk. You know, all the good stuff of cow's milk without all of the bad parts. You know, the bad parts I showed you in the beginning of the almond milk video. Yuck, go check that video out if you haven't seen it already. And then at the bottom of the log, oat milk. Um, and this is simply because ugh, oat milk is disgusting if you've ever tasted however if you need extra fiber in your diet then I guess it is a good thing so at the end of the day nutrition and the human body is beautifully complex and sometimes there just isn't a one-size-fits-all answer we'll have to make peace with that and get educated on how our bodies actually works so that we can make the best choices for ourselves and speaking about making the best choices for ourselves it would be a fantastic choice to click on the subscribe button below because that's how you can educate yourself on what is good for you and what isn't if you appreciate the effort i put into my videos i'd really like it if you can click the like button subscribe as i just said and i'll see you in the next video which is going to be very exciting I'm not going to tell you what it's about yet because i haven't made it yet but we'll get there anyways i'll see you in the next video cheers bye oh and youtube thinks you should watch this video right here for real, this one, YouTube says, is the best idea for you. The algorithms decided. See you in the next one. Cheers, bye.